Good morning. Welcome to today's Eucharist as we celebrate the third Sunday of Lent. Father Tony is our celebrant today. Please stand and join in the entrance hymn. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Good morning and welcome. Welcome to you joining us on Facebook and YouTube today. And uh, if you see something you like, click like. If you see something you don't like, you can also unlike. And if you're on YouTube, you can click subscribe and you'll always see when we uh, post a new video to the station. Welcome to everyone else as we gather today. Uh, QRs are essential, of course, and uh, masks are recommended, but not uh, obligatory if you can observe your social distancing. We begin, as always, seeking God's mercy and forgiveness for our shortcomings and failings. Lord, you are the seat of wisdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, you call us to a change of heart. Christ, have mercy. Lord, you bring us the wisdom of your word. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin. Look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. God spoke all these words. He said, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no gods except me. You shall not make yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything in heaven or on earth beneath or in waters under the earth. 
you shall not bow down to them or serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, and I punish the father's fault in the sons, the grandsons, and the great-grandsons of those who hate me. But I show kindness to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not utter the name of the Lord your God to misuse it. For the Lord will not leave unpunished the man who utters his name to misuse it. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. For six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath for the Lord your God. You shall not do work that day, neither you nor your son nor your daughter nor your servants, men or women, nor animals, nor the stranger who lives with you. For in six days the Lord made heavens and the earth and the sea and all that these hold. But on the seventh day he rested. And that is why the Lord has blessed the Sabbath day and made it sacred. Honor your father and your mother so that you may have a long life in the land that the Lord your God has given you. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his servant, man or woman, or his ox, or his donkey, or anything that is his. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of St. Paul to the Corinthians. While the Jews demand miracles and the Greeks look for wisdom, here we are preaching a crucified Christ to the Jews an obstacle that they cannot get over, to the pagans madness, but to those who have been called, whether they are Jews or Greeks, 
a Christ who is the power and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness stronger than human strength. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. according to John. Just before the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. And in the temple, he found people selling cattle and sheep and pigeons and the money changers sitting at their counters there. Making a whip out of some cord, he drove them all out of the temple, cattle and sheep as well scattered the money changers' coins, knocked their tables over, and said to the pigeon sellers, take all this out of here and stop turning my father's house into a market. Then his disciples remembered the words of scripture, zeal for your house will devour me. The Jews intervened and said, what sign can you show us to justify what you've done? Jesus answered, destroy this sanctuary and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews replied, it's taken 46 years to build this sanctuary and you're going to raise it up in three days? He was speaking of the sanctuary that was his body. And when Jesus rose from the dead, his disciples remembered that he'd said this and they believed the scripture and the words he had said. During his stay in Jerusalem for the Passover, many believed in his name when they saw the signs that he gave. He never needed... But Jesus knew them all and did not trust himself to them. He never needed evidence about any man he could tell what a man had in him. The Gospel of the Lord. In that first reading from the book of Exodus, uh, which uh, Kabasso read for us, uh, we hear the Ten Commandments. And the Ten Commandments, uh, of course, are a very much a contentious issue these days because they're basically a summary of God's law and there are many who would say, well, they don't teach the Ten Commandments anymore. And I'm not sure that we don't teach the Ten Commandments, but I'm certain that we don't keep the Ten Commandments. And there's all sorts of good excuses for doing that. Some people say, oh, look, they're so negative. They are so negative. We, we're positive people. So they're too negative for us, so we'll just ignore them. And there are, of course, others who take a very, very narrow interpretation. Oh, I know it says you can't covet your neighbour's ox, but there's nothing in there about Ferraris. People make all sorts of interpretations about these things. But it comes at a cost. But when we ignore the word of God, there is an impact. You see, whenever people spin the facts to get the result they want, things get very much disturbed and turned up on their head. And when people start to edit little pieces of information out or forget 
certain parts that are inconvenient or not mention other things or cut out the things that don't agree with their argument or even to stitch up their argument with just the bits they like, then pretty soon you get some pretty strange results. I mean, we saw it this week. This is a very, very strange world. We had to, this week a journalist who seriously suggested that the Attorney General should undertake a process to prove his innocence. That's a total inversion of the whole system of justice. Maybe they didn't understand what they were saying. But you can't prove your innocence. You can't prove something didn't happen. The basis of law is proving that something did happen. And then, a little bit further on, there was this assumption of wickedness. One of the men most responsible for getting children to read, Dr Theodore Geisel, also known as Dr Seuss, has been challenged for writing things that were unacceptable these days. Someone got up and said, if I'd written about a little Chinese man eating with sticks, I would have done it in a very racist manner, and therefore he must have as well. Attributing or assuming wickedness to other people, that's not God's way either. And then we had the chief executive officer of a leading law firm apologising to the staff because they'd taken as their client someone who had allegedly committed a crime. Excuse me, I thought that was the law firm's job. These strange things happen when we start to twist things to our own likes rather than to the facts. Jesus takes the Ten Commandments and he summarises them very succinctly. Love God and love your neighbour. Nothing negative about that. What we really need to do is to take a good look at what God is asking of us. You shall have no other gods besides me. He's really telling us to get serious. That God is God. And that this is far more important than barracking for Carlton or Collingwood. You shall not carve idols for yourselves, nor bow down before them. He's basically saying, get real. Stop fantasising. Stop building an artificial world of your own like and design. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Well, you're not God. So don't go casting God's judgment on others. Be humble. Remember to keep holy the Sabbath day? Well, sometimes it's best not to say anything. Just be quiet. Calm down. Listen to what God is saying. You can't do that if you're talking all the time. Honour your father and your mother. Respect age and experience. Far too little of that these days. You shall not kill. From the womb to the tomb, we should respect all life. And it's distressing to see other states taking Victoria's lead and legislating for euthanasia. When it's too expensive to look after people, just ask them to kill themselves. That's not really God's plan. You shall not commit adultery is really about keeping your word. Being people of integrity and sticking to your commitment. You shall not steal is about respecting other people's property. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbour. Be truthful. Speak the truth. Don't speak your truth. Don't speak their truth. Speak the truth. There is the truth. It's not my truth or your truth. 
You shall not covet your neighbour's house or wife. This happens a lot more than you think. When we envy the lifestyle of others. When we think, oh gee, they've got it so easy. Why is my life so hard? When we look and prefer what they've got to what we have. When we want what they've got. Happens all the time. These are the things that lead to a disruption in our society. But by going back to those Ten Commandments and looking not at the negativeness of them but rather what they positively call us to do, then we can start to find the blessings that God has for us. Blessings when we follow his way. Let's stand and profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The commands of the Lord are clear, but his mercy is great. Let's pray to our Father, trusting in his wisdom. That the Catholic Church may guide her members in the paths of goodness and bring them closer to God's love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may learn to turn away from sin with our hearts, remaining obedient to God's law. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that those who do not believe may yet hear the word of God and be brought to eternal salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That during this holy season, we may recognize the crucified Christ as the power and wisdom of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick members of our families and parish, especially Janeline Rizos, Bill Hine. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the faithful departed may enjoy eternal life through the crucified and risen Lord, especially George Simpson. And for those whose anniversaries occur at this time, especially Peter Leonard, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, in wisdom you've revealed your law. In mercy you give us grace to fulfil it. Hear the petitions of the people gathered in the name of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Blessed to you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed to you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, Lord, with these sacrificial offerings and grant that we who beseech pardon for our sins may take care to forgive our neighbour through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you've given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that free from disordered affections they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, especially Peter Leonard, whose anniversary occurs at this time, and all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Timothy, St. Clair, St. Francis Xavier, 
and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever. The Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And your spirit. Let's offer each other a sign of the peace of Christ. who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my room. Only say the word and my soul shall be.
This week's uh, Project Compassion video is a uh, short three-minute vision. My name is Oliver. This is my story. I live in the Arusha region of northern Tanzania with my husband and four children. To support my family, I run a kiosk selling groceries, tea and snacks. As a child, my parents couldn't afford to send me to school. As an adult, I was embarrassed that I was unable to read or write. People used to take advantage of me because I couldn't count. As a result, I was operating my business at a loss. I wanted to be more. So I enrolled in literacy and numeracy classes as part of Caritas Australia's a program. I noticed that other women were interested in the classes, but were too embarrassed to be seen in the same class as their children. Even though I was still learning myself, I set up a classroom in my house and started passing on my knowledge to my neighbors. I have now graduated and I am literate. Education has enabled me to become closer to my children as we can now do homework together. Attendance at my home-based classes is growing. My business is thriving and I am running for leadership in our village election so I can represent my community. Thank you, Cartas Australia. Please give generously to Project Compassion today. So thank you very much for your contributions to Project Compassion in the past because they made Oliver's story possible. And we have the opportunity again this year to make a contribution and make a change in people's lives around the world. Next week, our seminarian Edward is being, uh, he's making his profession of final vows at St Paschal's on Saturday morning. And then on Sunday morning, Bishop Vincent Long from Parramatta will be ordaining him a deacon. So uh, the details of that are in the bulletin. You're invited to, get, to go along and uh, to share at St Paschal's uh, chapel next Saturday and Sunday. The Way of the Cross is continuing this Friday, the 12th of March. It will be here at St Francis Xavier Church at 7.30, a good gathering of people to pray the Way of the Cross through the Lenten season. And uh, our parish is hosting the uh, winter shelter on a Sunday night in the Friars Room from June until August. So if you're interested in volunteering to help uh, in assist in some way, please see the bulletin for information sessions uh, about the Whitehorse Churches Care Winter Shelter program that we're planning at the moment. Let's now stand and pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still here on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, Lord, that what's being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks to you, Lord. And thanks to all of you. Enjoy your long weekend.